Hey everyone, today we're gonna to talk about some of the possibilities with XAPI that I don't hear people talking about a lot. And I wanted to talk to you about really what you can do, not only pushing XAPI data, but also pulling XAPI data and then personalizing future content. So we're just gonna, we're not gonna get into any of the code or anything like that. We're just gonna talk about different possibilities here. And uh, you're gonna see me geek out here because I really get excited about the possibilities with XAPI here. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome back. If you haven't already, check out my website at learningdojo.ninja. You can check out my blog. You can check out courses, full courses on XAPI as well. And you can dive into other blog posts about XAPI and how to send over statements and how to structure a statement and even what a statement is made of as well. So you can explore all of that. But we're gonna dive today into something a little bit different that I don't hear a lot of people talking about when they talk about XAPI, and that's using XAPI to personalize future content. And not only pushing content like you can with XAPI, but pulling content into your courses and adapting your course based on the information that's inside of your learning record store. So this really comes from a blog post that I did that's titled One Size Won't Fit All. And you can check out the blog posts here at bit.ly slash personal dash learning. And it really talks about how we tend to create the same course for everybody. We push out the same content for everybody, all 5,000 employees that we may have or more or less. In e-learning, we tend to build these courses that everyone has to take, no matter what they've done already, no matter their history in the company, no matter if they've already passed the test, if they're working with this data all the time, we don't take that into consideration. With XAPI, we can track more information, which means that we can also get more information and use that information on the fly. So we're gonna talk about the possibility here and I'll walk you through a little bit of an example of how I did this inside of Storyline. So the goal for today is to really go beyond just showing you how to track learning behavior. I have plenty of blog posts on how to send over XAPI statements, but today we're really gonna dive into how to get those XAPI statements back into a future course and then adapt the content based off of that. So we're gonna show you how to adapt the learning and use this information to adapt it. So here's the problem that I see in the industry and I've talked about it already a little bit, is we tend to push information, we tend to push the same information, or we tend to just track information for the learner. So we're just tracking if they've completed the course, we're tracking if they've completed a video and stuff like that. And while that's an important part, we don't talk a lot about the pulling of the information. And honestly, probably because it's a little bit harder and it's, it just takes a little bit longer to do and then you have to adapt and you have to figure it out and you have to build the course that branches to different locations. So that's why I think we tend to take the easier route and not do this. However, the, the benefit of it is tremendous, like being able to adapt content and really give the learner the, the right content in the right time. And it's really, you know, instead of having to go through the same content, I mean, I hear this complaint all the time. I know you do as well. I've already taken this. I take this every single year. I already know the content. Why am I taking this again? That's all information that um, we just keep pushing. Now, some of it's mandatory. I get that. Some of it you have to every single year, but some of it you don't. And so that's why I want you to, to really think about that. So to really illustrate this, let's walk through an example here. So we have two different people here. We have somebody who's been with a company for a long time, and we have somebody who's been or just started with a company. So right here, Laura, she's been with a company just for one year. We have her certifications are none. Her course history, she's taken three courses so far, so not many, but she's taken a few. And her skills assessment is about 40% in the skills that she needs for her job. Compared to Antonio, Antonio's been with the company for 10 years. He has his PMP certification. He's taken over 70 different courses and he's been skill assessed on those courses and he's ranked at about 85% in his skill level. So we have a lot of information about Antonio. We don't have a lot of information about Laura yet, but we are going to be gaining that information. 
but we serve the same content. We give them the same exact content. No matter that Antonio has been here 10 years, Laura has been here one year, they take the same course every single year and uh, they have to go through that entire course no matter what. That's where it doesn't make sense to me is we need to do a little bit better here. So let's think of it this way. So Antonio is further along in his progress. And so he's he's a little bit down the line. He's experienced a lot more as well. But there's key points that we still need to track. And so the push part, pushing information or events over to a learning record store is still an important part. I'm not trying to say that it's not here. And the nice thing about that is the fact that we can, if we're using a learning record store, we can store all this information over to a learning record store. But that's the push part. We push all that content, Laura's experience, Antonio's experience as well, and we push it over there. So let's go back a little bit and talk about Antonio. So we have a start date, and what we can do with XAPI is we can send over a statement and say, hey, Antonio has started, so let's store that inside of the learning record store. So as he continues and he starts to progress and he has uh, more certifications and other things like that, like he gets his PMP certification, we can send that event over to the learning record store as well. That's the push part of XAPI. We're pushing these events over to the learning record store and we're storing that information inside of the learning record store. So anything that we want to have as those events, any Thing inside of a single course or anything, you know, just one course as well. If they've completed it as well, we can store that event over into the learning record store. So that is an important part. But when Antonio launches a future course, this is where I'm saying that we can actually go into the learning record store and we can pull information back and we can then adapt or maybe take down uh, Antonio down a smaller path of the course. So he's just reviewing instead of learning everything from new. And that's just something that we can do, you know, and guide the learner or adapt the content based off of the learner and the history. Now we can look for specific things. You don't have to get all information back. You can filter out things and just get information. Okay. From this last year, I only want to see completion verbs as well. So you can filter all of that out and just get the information that you want for specific courses. So XAPI has the capability to push these events and track these events, but it also has the capability to pull these events and get the data. And when you pull these events, it's something called querying the learning record store, the database. We're asking a question, we're going to the learning record store and saying, hey, does Antonio have these completed verbs? Does in the last year? Has uh, Antonio done this already as well? And we're getting and storing that information back inside of our course and then deciding what to do after we get that information back. So that's where we can then adapt and change the content based on the history of what Antonio has done. And to me, I think this is the future of learning. I don't think we're there yet and take some more effort. This is where I can see more authoring tools, you're really stepping it up and being able to personalize and adapt content and especially learning experience platforms, being able to uh, take into account what the learner is learning, what their skills are and uh, adapt content, and especially if that learning experience platform or an LXP can actually pull in XAPI data. I think that's the sweet spot, being able to pull in that XAPI data. So you're, you're having to design the course a little bit different. So we have a course and then we have three different possibilities. So you have to get the information back and then you say, okay, if they have this many verbs, then go down this path. If they have this many verbs, then go down that path. And so this is where I think it takes a little bit more effort to do, but I think the payoff is worth it. And hopefully this gets a little bit easier to do in the future. I'm actually working on some ways to make it a little bit easier as well. And then you may have to branch off more. So there is a lot more branching, but you're personalizing the content and you're allowing the, the learner who knows and has been around a long time to only spend 10 minutes in a course instead of having to spend 30 minutes in a course and then being able to get back to work and being more effective that way. So I'm going to walk through a storyline example to kind of illustrate this as well. I'll show you a little bit of the code, but we're not going to dive into what the code means yet. So try not to get too hung up on that. Just, you know, grasp the concept of what I'm saying here of the fact that XAPI can help you personalize. And if you really want to dive into the code, I do cover how to pull information back inside of my XAPI course. So let's go ahead and pull up storyline here. And you can see here in storyline, 
I am capturing the user name and I'm also capturing the email. You can do this through a single sign-on. There's, way there's ways to do that. You can pull the information if the course is inside of the learning management system as well. So you don't have to prompt them for their username and their email, but uh, you can if you want to here. So on this next page, what I'm doing is I'm pulling data. You can see that I'm executing a JavaScript command, which I'm just calling this function right here. And we're gonna show you where that function is. So I'm just gonna call it. And then once the course is published out, I'm then going to uh, add the code in there because it's a lot more code. And I like to work with a text editor rather than doing it all inside of Storyline here. And then the information is gonna pull back and I have these variables started counts, interacted counts, and completed count. So I'm pulling the information from the learning record store and I'm going to filter it out for the information that I want to know. And then I'm going to update the storyline variable that I've created here of started counts, interacted counts, and completed count. So I'm going to do that. And then I have this button right here that says if started counts is less than or equal to five, then I'm going to jump to scene four. So if they haven't experienced a lot of these different types of started verbs, and you can decide which verb you're using, but if it, they haven't experienced a lot of it, then you're going to go to this longer scene here. So I've set up three different scenes, a large scene, a medium scene, and a small scene. So this is where I'm deciding. I'm pulling the information back from the learning record store. I'm getting the counts. I'm then basically saying, okay, with that count, if it's less than five, they haven't experienced a lot, go to the larger one. If it's greater than six or less than 10, then go to the medium one. And if it's greater than 11, then go to the small one. If they've done this a lot, and uh, you'll, you'll look at the filters once we publish this out. If they've done this a lot, then they just need a review, essentially. From here, I publish this out into my web, and I'm just doing web. You don't need to do an LMS unless you're going to host it on an LMS. And then I hit publish here. Now, as soon as I hit publish, this is my published project right here. Now I need to attach the different files here in order for XAPI to work. So I have the crypto.js, I have my own code, which I named interaction.js, and I'll pull what that is and you can see what that is. And then I have this ADL XAPI wrapper. Now inside of that wrapper, that's where I connect to the learning record store. And the learning record store that I'm using is the SCORM cloud learning record store, which is free. And that's where I do all of my testing. So if I pull this file up, this whole folder, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code here. Visual Studio Code is a free application and it's pretty easy to use here. So I'm going to close out a one that I had previously open here. Let me actually open this one more time. I had some other projects open. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to close that out and we're going to attach those files. So this is on my story underscore HTML5 here. I have the crypto.js file, I have the ADL wrapper, and I have the interaction.js. So that's how you attach the files so you can use them. Now, if I go in and pull up those files, you have the XAPI wrapper, which this basically is just connecting with my learning record store so I can send over statements. And then in the interaction.js, this is how I'm sending over statements, but this is how I'm getting the statements. So I have that function that I put inside of Storyline. So as soon as you click the button, it's going to call this function. Now what it's doing is it's grabbing the username that we set up inside of Storyline. So inside of Storyline, we when the user entered in their name and their email, we stored it inside of a username and we stored it inside of an email address. And this is how you can get that information from Storyline. So we're just grabbing those two pieces of information because we need it. Then we're setting up this get started verbs array. We're going to pull the data and put it inside of this array. Again, don't get too wrapped up inside of the code. I'm just going an overview here. This is how we filter out the information and we say, hey, we only want this information, which down below, this is how we set our filters. And so we say, hey, ADL XAPI wrapper, these are our search parameters. I don't want all the information. I only want certain information. And I want it from the time since, and the time since is this data up here. And then also the verb, I get the ID, not the actual just verb statement. I need to get the ID that uh, was used when the statement was sent. 
and then I'm getting the activity ID. So when I send over statements, I send over an activity ID. That's why creating your activity ID is an important part. And then I'm getting or using the email address to get who the person is. So those are the, the four parameters that I'm getting. How long ago? So I want it from the last five years, I can do that. What ID do I wanna get information about? And then what activity ID do I wanna get information about? And who's the user that I wanna get information about? If I leave any one of these off, then it's just gonna give me more information. So keep that in mind. So now what happens is it gets this information back and this is how we get our statements. And then if there's some information in this array that I've created, we're basically storing the number of that information. So how many statements there are. So that's where the dot length comes into play. And then we are updating that variable that we created. If you come back into Storyline, this start counted. This is how you set a variable back into Storyline using JavaScript. So we're updating that variable with the length of statements that we've gotten back. So now Storyline knows how many statements are back and we can go ahead and decide what to do with it, which that decision point is inside of Storyline. We've already set that up essentially. And really when you're getting the different statements, a lot of this is just copying and pasting it. So you're not really having to modify or create a lot of new code. It's just taking this code and adjusting the parameters and okay, now I want the completed verb instead of the started verb. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at and see what this does now. This is a course that I've already published out. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my name. I have taken this a lot, so I know it's gonna pull some information here. I can send statements right here. It says that I've sent over a statement. I can go to the next page and then I can click on pull data. Now you can see it has 22. Now my logic was if I have more than 11, it's gonna to go to the small scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and you can see it says small. Let's go ahead and hit refresh here and let's do Sammy McGee and let's do samster at gmail.com. And now if I hit start statement, it's gonna send over one statement. And now if I hit next and hit pull data, notice that it only pulls one. And so if I click on the view custom scene here, it's gonna take me to the large. So see how quick that was being able to send over the statement, to be able to pull the statement, and then to decide what to do with the statement. So there's a lot of possibility here. And this is really what gets me excited of being able to customize and adapt the content, whether you're using Storyline or Captivates or Lectora, it really doesn't matter. It's just pulling the information back from the learning record store and adapting and personalizing the content for the learner. So there's a lot of possibility here. And I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you could do here. And if you have some more thoughts on this, I would love for you to share those thoughts with me. Go ahead and email me, jeff at learningdojo.ninja, and share some thoughts so we can expand upon this a little bit more. But if you haven't already, check out my website, learningdojo.ninja. You can check out blog posts on augmented reality. You can see XAPI statements and breaking it down. You can see templates as well and download Storyline templates and XAPI templates. You can see courses on Storyline and Captivates and XAPI and a lot of information there. So go ahead and check that out. But thank you for taking the time to watch this video and hopefully it at least shows you the possibilities that we can do with XAPI. And honestly, we're just scratching the surface with XAPI. There is a lot of possibilities here that we can do. So thanks everyone, I'll see you next time.